Hi, my name is Donovan Keith, and in this video, I'm gonna walk through how to take a bunch of simple objects like these cubes sort of laid out in, um, you know, the layout of a, a lower body, and arrange them in the Objects Manager so that uh, they're easy to manipulate uh, and to set you up for animation success. So as I look at my scene right now, everything, you know, looks fairly well laid out. And uh, one thing that I, is, is going well is that uh, the initial pose here is nice and neutral, uh, which is a good starting point for animation. You generally um, want things to be lined up uh, vertically, sort of horizontally, nice and clean, nice and uh, symmetrical, so that it's easier then to go back to sort of a default pose as you're working. So uh, playing with this, there's a, a few things I'm gonna wanna do. First things first, I wanna probably you know, save this project, which I've got here, lower body version one, we'll probably want to version that up at some point. And uh, some other things we'll want to do are name these elements. So uh, first things first, I'm going to select this topmost object, and I'm going to call this hips. Oops. This leg uh, right here, or this thigh, I'm going to call thigh. Uh, but Generally, you want to prefix objects with uh, the left or the right side for character animation. So I'm going to use capital L underscore and then thigh. Capital L shin. Capital L foot. Capital L toes. And there are some tools that we can use to sort of simplify some of this naming, copying and pasting hierarchies, but for now, let's just do it manually. It's a fairly simple hierarchy. Hierarchy, Right thigh, right shin, right foot, and right toes. And in terms of how you structure this, uh, what you want to do is, and it's really going to depend on the animation you want to do, but but generally for characters, you want to start with sort of the center of gravity of your character, or even with other objects, sort of the, the largest, most massive part of it, the thing that it feels like most of the motion will be sort of coming from or, or um, centered at. And in that case, in our case, it's these hips here. So uh, this, I'm going to just sort of make my topmost object. Uh, next, I'm going to grab this thigh right here and I'm gonna drag that thigh into my hips. I'm gonna drag my shin into my thigh. My feet into my shin and my toes into my foot. And as you can kind of see, we're just going through one by one in sort of descending order to create this hierarchy. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So again, right thigh, followed by right shin, followed by right foot, followed by right toes. And it gets a little bit tricky here. What I wanna do is drag this into my hips. And um, truth be told, I don't recall the, the sort of ideal order left to right uh, in hierarchy. We can maybe take a look at the figure and see how that's li lined up. And it seems like left thigh is coming first. And if you're trying to figure out a good hierarchy, the the figure object's a pretty good starting point, as are some of the uh, the characters in the assets browser. You can sort of use those for reference. So we now have a character uh, with these elements sort of laid out. You might do a save incremental now. So that would be file save incremental. And uh, what you can now do is click and drag to manipulate and it's all sort of coming together. You can rotate by coming in here, and so they're sort of rotating together. You can grab one thigh and rotate that, and the motion is both right and wrong, right? You can achieve kind of a kicking motion here, but it's severing at the hip, which is less than ideal. So uh, what we wanna do now is manipulate the position of the axis of our object. Um, and the axis is this sort of center point in the object. It's where it's pivoting from or rotating from. It's also uh, you know, the thing that you grab to move it around. Now, in Cinema 4D, there are a couple of ways now to manipulate your axis. And I'll just go over them sort of briefly. I'm gonna go over the manual method, which is to take any of your primitive objects, 
and convert them to a polygon object. And you do that by clicking on this Make Editable button. And uh, the thing that's happened here is our formerly what's called parametric cube, right? You know, when you would click on a cube, you get all these settings where you can adjust the width and the height, the, you know, the amount of subdivisions and rounding. Well, we've lost all of that ability right now. Um, we don't have these parametric objects, but we now have the ability to come in here and say polygon mode and grab an individual part or piece of our object and manipulate that, same for points and edges. Uh, and it also allows us to come in here and use this axis mode. So the axis mode, I'm going to sort of go into my four-way view here, and I'm going to manipulate this axis so that it is anchored or positioned where I want my thigh to rotate from. So I'm kind of just dragging it up here, maybe it to the sort of the top of the hip um, or the base of the hip there. And once I leave axis mode, I can now uh, move my object from that point and I can rotate it from that same point. I'm going to do the same thing for my shin. I'm going to make this object editable. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on this or tapping the C key on your keyboard. And again, I'm going to go into my axis mode and take my move tool and manipulate it. But there's another way you can enter your axis mode. Uh, you can look at it, and if you hover it over it, you'll see the keyboard shortcut L. And L is great because it sort of looks like the axis icon, which kind of looks like an L. So if you press and hold down L on your keyboard, what's going to happen is you're going to enter what's called a sticky keys mode, where you're temporarily entering into the tool associated or the tool or the mode associated with that keyboard shortcut. So now I can click and drag, and I'm doing this in my side view, not in a perspective view, so I can I have a cleaner sense of where things are going to be. And I'm going to move this um, not quite to the center, maybe just a little bit to the front here. I'm going to go in and follow that same process for the next one. So using just keyboard shortcuts now, tapping C to make it editable, holding down the L key to enter axis mode, and clicking and dragging to sort of position this at the ankle. Same thing for the toes here. I'm going to make that editable, hold down my L key to manipulate, and I'm dragging it over here to sort of this point right here. And now I'm back in uh, my perspective view with my model mode. If I click and drag, I can manipulate all of this. If I rotate from the hips, the hips are sort of working. If I rotate from this hip right here, this is uh, working pretty great. The knee also now, as I rotate, that's also functioning well. Same thing for the leg right here. And what I can do, if I uh, am so inclined, is I can select all of these elements. And for the hips, for the thigh, left thigh, foot, and all of that, I'm going to do something called freeze transformation. And so with all of these selected, you see that their positions, uh, it's not showing them because they, they all have sort of non-default positions. If you open up Freeze Transformation here and choose Freeze All, what it's going to do here, I'll do this with uh, just the left thigh to start. You can see we've got all of these positions that are sort of measured out. And these are positions relative to the parent object, in this case, the hips. And if I choose Freeze All, those values kind of get sucked out of here and piped into where it says Freeze Transformation down below. And you can kind of hide these away. What's nice about this is if you say rotate an object out of place or move it out of place, you can select this element and then just right click on any of these arrows and it's going to reset those parameters one by one. Or if you want to reset your position scale and rotation uh, more easily, if you click on the coordinates manager here, which is another place that shows you the coordinates of your object, there's a reset transform button. And that will just reset all of the position scale rotation to zero, uh, except for these frozen coordinates. Uh, and this is, again, really nice for character animation, where you can get back to like a safe default pose before, you, you know, the, before the time they maybe mess things up a little bit. Now, um, manipulating your axis in this way, you know, manually grabbing it and positioning it is great, um, because it allows you to be incredibly specific about where things should, should be. The challenge with this workflow is that the axis position is not um, 
parametric, right? Like it's no longer can you come into your cube and manipulate the number of segments or any of that. You'd have to recreate it. So if you want to maintain these uh, axis positions, you can add what is called a capsule. And there is a capsule that you can search for in your Assets Manager here called uh, Axis Transform, I believe. And you can't quite make it out. If you go over to Operators, you'll see it a little bit more clearly. And if you go from this grid view to your list view, you'll be able to read it. And Geometry Axis is the one that I want. So I can grab this and go to the Inputs tab, and it will allow me to manipulate this. And you can see that you can sort of move your axis down here. And now I can move my thigh up and manipulate from there. Now this is something that you generally want to do before you set up your hierarchy. And uh, you know what, this is, this is honestly just complicating things a little too much. So let's go over the naming tool really quickly. So I've got my left thigh um, here sort of lined up looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I am going to move it over here to the other side. Now, if I look at my coordinates tab, it's got a position of 0, 0, 0. And that's because we did that sort of freeze transformation here. So the real position, quote unquote, is this uh, 7.97, whatever this is, centimeters. And if you wanted to view that without going into you know, your various uh, freeze transforms, you can go into your coordinates manager and change your positions to world, and you'll see where this exists in sort of global space, sort of relative to this world axis. So if I want, I can grab this and set the X position there to negative, and now it's sort of mirrored over. Uh, and if I want, I can come through here and manually rename. So uh, I like to use keyboard shortcuts for all of this to make it a little bit easier. The home key will get me to the left-hand side, and I can just type R and then the down arrow will select this next element and I can sort of use my arrow keys and head over and uh, do something like this. Now I'm going to hit undo and I'm going to show off something called the naming tool which allows you to do this just a little bit more easily. I'm going to select all of the elements that I want to name and I'm going to go into tools and choose naming tool. That's going to come up over here in my attributes manager and I'm going to replace left underscore with right underscore or R underscore and choose replace name. And it's just going to go through there and do a find and replace on the name. And I'm going to come in and I'm also going to update my material. Right now it's that sort of blue one for the left. I'm going to select all of those tags by dragging a cursor around them. And I'm going to choose right. So now I've got a nice simple hierarchy. I'm going to hide all of these because I don't really need them anymore. And uh, my right thigh, the one thing we still need to do here is to freeze its transforms. So that gets uh, positioned there. And I can now rotate this and it's behaving as expected. So that's how you can uh, set up a hierarchy for animation. Uh, just to sort of quickly review, you uh, want to nest your objects inside of each other. Uh, with the sort of the heaviest or the sort of center of gravity at the top of your hierarchy. Uh, you want to keep things nice and orderly. Use a prefix of le uh, L underscore or R underscore, just depending on the side of your object to make things easier to identify. Uh, name things clearly. And you're probably going to want to go in there and adjust your axis by making your element editable. Uh, using this make editable command here and using your move, uh, your axis mode here along with move. And again, you want to work in your four way views, not in your perspective view until you've got a bit more Cinema 4D under your belt. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, do a save incremental once you've got something you like. So uh, as an exercise, uh, try and create a version of this uh, for a torso. So model. Uh, a simple sort of segmented character like this for the torso. Try and nest the elements in a way that makes sense to you. If you get stuck and you're not sure how to uh, order things, uh, open up this figure object and click on Make Editable, which will reveal all of the parts and pieces that make this up, and you'll see a, a pretty well-structured hierarchy.